Mwahaha! Welcome back to the studio. Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and as promised, we are back for the bonus video of the dragster. So this is just going to be some lettering and numbering on the hood scoop. And for those of you who aren't following along with the dragster project, then this is just some simple numbering. Being as this number isn't the permanent number, this is just the classification for his class. Um, it has to come off at some point. So the paint we're going to use today is going to be the one-shot lettering enamel up on the shelf there, the yellow cans. And white and black. Um, I think we're going to bang off the white first and then we're going to slap in some black outlines for this one because the numbering is going to be removed. I don't want cut lines. So I went down to my buddies at Global Signs. Global Signs. And they cut me out some vinyl masking for this to keep it ease and again to avoid any cut lines. Otherwise... It's like four numbers and two letters, something I could easily cut with the X-Acto knife. But, as I said, don't want cut lines. So, we're going the vinyl direction on this one. Costs a little bit of cash. If I had my own plotter, I could do it myself. But again, I find it's easier just to hand cut most of my stuff. And when I need this type of stuff specialized, head on down to my buddies at Global Signs. <laughs> They're not sponsoring this video, just some buddies of mine. I'm going to flip you guys around and we're going to get in on it. What do you say? I say we get on our way. So here we are with the vinyl pre-mask. It's a little less sticky than regular vinyl. And what I like to do is stick it on there, get a loose bearing of where you'd like to put it, and then map out the bottom edge and one side with some masking tape. And this keeps your position for the next step after we apply the vinyl transfer paper. And I'm just using a Bondo spreader. And a uh, handy little tip, guys, I found when peeling the vinyl back, it's better to peel the paper off the vinyl than it is to peel the vinyl off the paper. I hope that makes sense. It just leads for less separation and it sticks better to your transfer paper. And here I am again using that Bondo spreader. I've just taped on a little piece of Velcro, not the hooky part, the soft part. And that helps for applying these vinyl graphics. And what you saw me do there was cut out a crease and save that transfer paper because you can use it again. And, uh, here we're using it again. <laughs> yeah, uh, sometimes the videos go too fast for me to voice over, but luckily, luckily we've got two sides and we get to do it twice. So we're going to reiterate a few points here. <laughs> watch out for Klingons. If you don't get anything else from this video, <laughs> watch out for them pesky Klingons. And uh, again, rolling that backing paper off the vinyl, and that helps to alleviate any pieces of the vinyl sticking to the backing paper. And because we're working over a double curvature, I'm just going to lay that down as best as I can and then literally cut out any of these creases so that the vinyl lays nice and flat. And sometimes you're better off just hacking out a big chunk of it rather than messing around with these creases. All right. Look at that. Goo. <laughs> That's right. It's still good. It's still good. Don't need a lot of it. Just need a bit. And we're going to have to thin this out considerably to get that to be able to spray through this. Oh, where are you? Where? Ah, we got you. Oh, the ooey gooey goodness. <laughs> so that's about as much as I put in there. And now I'm going to thin it out quite a bit. So that's the thinners. And if I were to give it a ratio, I'd say about four to one thinners to paint. 
but uh, stick around and see why that might be too much thinners. And one of the reasons why I don't typically like to give out paint ratios. <laughs> Still getting quite the dot pattern on this. I don't know if it just hasn't mixed thoroughly in the cup yet. Definitely hasn't mixed thoroughly in the cup yet. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll just pinch that with some paper towel. Allow the air to kick back in there and that helps mix anything that's down in the chamber. I would give that another spin. Oh yeah. Much better. Actually, we're gonna call this too thin. <laughs> now for big areas, I like to pull back on just the needle. Push down for air and then pull back and that gives you a little bit more pain. You have to be careful you don't pull back too far. But that should get us going. So 50-50 rule, starting from the top down, overlapping every pass by about 50%. Slow and steady. You'll see I'm about four inches away. And what I'm actually doing is I've got my wrists locked, I've got my elbows locked, and I'm just kind of swaying my whole body from side to side to get a nice consistent pattern. All right, so that went on way too wet. We're gonna let that dry for a bit before we come back and add any more paint. And we're gonna thicken up this paint as well. And this brings us back, Ryan, <laughs> that ain't gonna work. <laughs> and peel off the masking paper and save it. And uh, as I was saying, this brings us back full circle as to why I don't typically give out paint ratios. It's a trial and error game. Doesn't that make life easy? Yep, certainly does. And one final push down and we've thickened up the paint, testing her out to see how she sprays. And uh, we're gonna thicken it up just a little bit more and test her out once again. It's how I do. You keep adding some paint or adding some thinners till you have your desired consistency. <laughs> Surveiling the surface to make sure it's all stuck down and we are back into the exciting world of laying down the base. Using the 50% rule, each pass covers the last by 50%. We're gonna call that side one, side two, coat one, done, side one, side two, coat two. Oh, almost done. Got a little hair in there. So rather than spray over it, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna pick it out now before it becomes part of the art. <laughs> and now we are on to coat three and that's all she needs. Now, rather than peel up this vinyl all in one chunk, I am cutting it as I go and peeling it up in small sections and this lessens the chance of you dragging that vinyl over your freshly painted piece. Now you can have a good look at it, pretty clean edges and you gotta love the vinyl for that. You gotta love the vinyl for that. But uh, there is a little tiny bit of overspray, so I'm just gonna use my mineral spirits and a Q-tip and dampen it. That was soaked, so we're just gonna dampen it and we're just gonna lightly brush off where a little bit of that white paint kinda got onto the blue background. And like so, we are good to go. And with the cloth carefully, <laughs> just buffer on out. And same thing for side two. And guys, that's how I do. All right, now I've given that overnight to dry. It is nice and dry. There is no tack to it whatsoever. It's not sticky when I push down on it with my fingers. So the next step would be the black, which is basically an outline. Now this is going to be a little bit easier because we don't have to measure anything. However, it's going to be a little more difficult because we've got to make sure that these things line up exactly with what we've got on there. All right, so what I'm going to do with this is something that I kind of figured out on the Neon Demon. If you saw that video, had some peeling problems. So what I thought I would do to assist with uh well rather than talk about it 
let's just get on and do it and you can see what I mean. But first, we're gonna quickly prep these by adding the transfer paper and removing the backing paper, rolling at a shallow angle to help prevent any separation. And now here is the tip that I was alluding to. Um, spraying the back of the vinyl with a uh, water-based paint, now that's pretty important, but spraying the back of this vinyl is going to reduce the adhesive properties considerably. And there you can kind of see how much paint was actually applied, and there's a few reasons why we do this. One, to lower the adhesive properties, yes, but the water base, it dries quickly, and should we have any paint that gets left behind, being that it is a water-based and the one-shot is not. <laughs> we can clean it off afterwards. And uh, again, with the thinning and thickening process of the paint to get it at your desired consistency, tested and a final inspection to make sure that everything is stuck down. Probably gonna move that can in a minute here so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Move that can. That's the one. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, uh, literally, <laughs> I'm not doing a 50-50 rule when I'm doing these types of passes and these little tiny lines. What I'm actually doing is just a blend on each end of my pass so that the next pass can come in and blend into the previous pass, making sure that vinyl is nicely tucked in there and this is how you're going to get some nice consistent coverage and when you're working with black really two passes is all you need and uh yeah when you are working with black and peeling back to reveal the white you may want to clean those dirty little paws and we're just gonna quickly spray in the black patooey and rock on rock on Rock on. <laughs> and that's it. Peel her back. Do any cleaning that you might need to do, including those sticky little fingers. And ever so carefully remove the vinyl. Remo remove the vinyl. <laughs> or you can just use a Jedi mind sweep like so. And there you go. <laughs> And as always, let me know what you thought of the show. <laughs> and that's it for this one. I hope you guys learned a little something. Pretty simple, nothing too overly complicated. Working with vinyl masks and one-shot paint. And for those of you who are interested or inquiring, in order to take this off down the road, Oven easy off, spray a little bit of that on, let it sit for a minute, wipe it off. It will take off the one shot paint without affecting the base paint. Now it might dull the clear a little bit, which is just a simple polish to bring that clear back up. And then you can slap on a brand new number and go on racing in a brand new country. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this one. As always, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Feel free, drop me a line if you have any questions. You know how it goes. <laughs> Cheers. And feel free to march on down to the Spreadshirt page to snag yourself up a Bloodshot Army uniform. Support the cause, and don't forget guys, we've got the beginner series, airbrushing hacks, and project tutorials. Tell the world the Bloodshot Army is here to spray.